now coming to the most important video why is this more important is because this video enables us to understand the three dimensional view of the mandibular movement in one single frame what we see is how the condyles articulate along the articular eminence how the teeth contact go out of contact that is from occlusion to disocclusion in various movements how the ligaments and the muscles play a role in this mandibular movement frame so if we see that it is moving the blue becomes white that is contact becomes no contact so the first movement what we see is the right lateral excursion what is noted is that in a right lateral excursion you have the left lateral pterygoid muscle which traverses out similarly in a left lateral movement that is when the mandible move towards the left it is the right lateral pterygoid or the contralateral pterygoid which contracts so what is important is to understand this basic movement what we also see is as the mandible moves it's only the canines which contact causing disocclusion of all the other teeth what does it indicate this is canine guided occlusion coming to the next movement is protrusive movement wherein you have the lower incisal edges moving along the palatal surfaces of the upper incisors until they reach edge to edge now once they reach edge to edge what we seeing is that there is uniform movement of both the condyles along the articular eminence it can also extend up to the maximum protrusion now during a normal chewing if there is no disc displacement or any kind of abnormality present what we see is that there is a synchronized movement of the left as well as the right pterygoid muscles and the left and the right condyles are moving in a synchrony the biggest advantage of that being is the muscles the ligaments and the condyles function in harmony now when there is maximum opening it is the condyles which move beyond the slopes of the articular eminence but the ligaments limit this movement that is what we have to understand in case there is discal displacement what is also noted is that the entire synchronous movement becomes disorganized instead of having uniform point of contacts there are few areas which contact for example there are few posterior teeth which are contacting few anterior teeth which are contacting so the uniform contact then gives rise to premature contacts or interferences that is what spoils the entire harmony now these premature interferences or premature point of contacts can actually disturb the entire stomatognathic system so that is what is important to identify the cause and then correct the problem